we, we have the tree strap of truth and the sand bucket of honesty. <laughs> Dude. We hooked the van up. All right, how's it going? Welcome back to the Team O'Neill Rally School. I'm Wyatt. This Fiesta has an open differential, and we'll show you what that does now. Good enough. So that's the story with an open differential. The power is going to take the path of least resistance. In this case, this tire is on, you know, a little more polished ice than the other side. Also, you can tell this vehicle isn't perfectly level. Um, one side is heavier. The heavier side will have more grip and the lighter side will always be more prone to spinning. Higher angle stuff off-roading, it's always the uphill tires that spin or more commonly. Any two-wheel drive is going to be like that unless it has a limited slip differential uh, or traction control. All right, so this car has traction control and ABS and stability control still hooked up in it. We're going to spin the tires on this one and see what happens. Can you feel it switching a little? Yeah, I feel it switching a lot actually. So that's what you see with any decent traction control system like this, as that open differential sends power to one wheel. It's got a wheel speed sensor that knows that's happening. It applies brake to that wheel, forcing it to send some power to the other one. And that continues giving you pretty decent two wheel drive. Uh, you might find some forms of traction control that don't work that way. Some will just sense wheel spin and it'll cut the throttle electronically on you. Um, and if we can find a vehicle like that and anybody that might be willing to let us hook it up to our Jeep, we'll do that. Um, but just know that's a problem, you know, trying to go up a hill and it won't let the tires spin at all. And even if your right foot's right on the floor, it, it just bogs down and stops where a system like this is a lot more capable. All right, so what we've got here is another two-wheel drive car. So this has a quaff differential in it, which is a helical limited slip. Two-wheel drive limited slip differential. Let's see what it does. So that's the basics of how a limited slip diff works. It won't just let one tire spin like an open differential. So instead of a one wheel drive car, you've got a two wheel drive car. In the racing world, we prefer this over, you know, an open differential with traction control because we always know what this is going to do. Uh, we're not relying on a wheel speed sensor and a computer and everything else. So this can be a little more predictable. Any two wheel drive car, those are kind of your choices, whether it's front wheel drive or rear wheel drive. Even if this were a rear wheel drive car, sometimes you'll see welded differentials. Both of those tires are going the same speed always all the time, or you know, a locking differential like you'd find in an off-road bias truck or something like that. The problem with that is they don't like to turn because the outside tire has to take a longer arc than the inside tire. A welded diff or a real lock diff doesn't allow for that to happen. So that's why limited slips are good. All right, so you've got a four-wheel drive vehicle. You should have four-wheel drive, right? All right, so that's the deal with a four-wheel drive vehicle like this. And again, this is a normal, true four-wheel drive vehicle. It's got a normal mechanical transfer case that's locked into four low. The transmission's in first gear. He's just spinning the tires. The front and rear drive shafts are turning at exactly the same speed. 
This isn't an all-wheel drive. We'll do all-wheel drive next and talk about that. Um, but a four-wheel drive like this, unless you've got a limited slip differential in the rear or you know an off-roading truck that has locking differentials or something like that, that's what you're going to be up against. Once you get used to your car, you'll probably find that it tends to spin one tire more than the other. That's not actually a function of the differential. Uh, what you've most likely got is unequal length drive shafts. The Ford Fiestas tend to spin the left front tire more often. The Jeep Cherokees in four wheel drive tend to spin the left front tire more often. Both of those vehicles, you've got a shorter drive shaft on the left side than the right side. And that's the reason for that. It's got nothing to do with the diff. It's just that anyone who's used a socket wrench with a real long extension probably knows you can torque that thing before you get any rotation at the other end versus if you took that extension away all of a sudden you've got more immediate sort of power delivery if you want to go with that wording so that's why you see a lot of cars will favor spinning one tire more than the other it's just unequal length drive shafts all right so in an all-wheel drive vehicle like this, you've got three differentials. You've got the front differential and the rear differential, just like a four-wheel drive, but you've got a center differential. A Subaru's marketing has always said it sends power from the wheels that slip to the wheels that grip. Um, so let's see what you got. It sort of looks like from the wheels that slip, just keep slipping. Yeah, an all-wheel drive like this, you've got an open front diff, an open rear diff. Uh, both of those you saw just sends power to the path of least resistance, just like in a four-wheel drive truck or a two-wheel drive car or whatever. Um, the center diff in this actually did a really good job. It didn't look like the rear was spinning much faster than the front or the front was spinning much faster than the rear. Uh, it did a nice job in the center differential. That viscous coupling did, did its job for sure of being a good, like a limited slip. Um, but as long as you've got open front and rear differentials, you're just going to have one front and one rear tire spinning and you're going to be stuck. All right, so we mentioned earlier different kinds of traction control. Um, you know, you saw in the Fiesta that it just applies brakes to individual wheels, but we want to show you what happens in this Ford Transit van. I'm flat out. He's full throttle. So that's full throttle? That's full throttle the whole time. That's full throttle the whole time. As we went up and down, that was just the... So what's going on right now is he's full throttle just trying to drive along. And you can see it's cut the throttle not to the point where he's really stopped, but it's not letting the tires spin that much at all. When you hit the gas, no longer is it just a cable that goes to the engine throttle body. Uh, when you hit the gas pedal, it sends an electronic signal to the ECU, and that goes through a handful of different systems and decides whether or not to let the tire spin. And in this case, it lets it spin just a little bit. All right, so one last car to show you, Subaru. This is a WRX. Uh, the difference with this, it's still a viscous center differential, uh, but it has a limited slip rear differential. So theory would state that when he spins the tires, you would probably get one front tire spinning, both rear tires spinning, and the rear tires spinning at around the same time as the front tires. But let's see what happens. So that went about as we expected it to. Open front differential, spun one tire, viscous center differential, got the fronts and rears turning at about the same speed, and the limited slip rear differential got both of the rear tires turning at about the same speed. So that did its job, and that's about as good as you're gonna get three-wheel drive. You're not gonna see a lot of limited slip front differentials in cars. And that's really just so that the steering's nice and easy and you can go around tight corners and they're not really made for it. You will see it 
you know, some higher performance cars and certainly you get into some race cars, you've got limited slip front diffs, but as a production factory item on almost anything, you're not going to see it very often. It's just easier these days to have open differentials and traction control. You'll see a lot of companies market that really heavily uh, with different kinds of jargon as far as, oh, it's an open differential, but via the traction control, it's got manumatic electronic differential aid or whatever. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. Uh, as far as being a consumer, know what you're looking at. It's an open differential with traction control. When we turn these into full-on rally cars, we will often use a locking center differential with an electronic disconnect for the handbrake uh, because your handbrake would not work with a locked center differential. It wouldn't allow the rear wheels to lock up while the front wheels are still turning. A good limited slip in the back and often a limited slip in the front as well for a real rally car or race car or something like that. All right, so that's the basic rundown of some of the all-wheel drive stuff you're going to see. When you get into kind of the more modern vehicles, this is a 2015 Jeep Cherokee uh, with the traction control on. When it tries to spin one front wheel, it's going to apply brake to that and send power to the other side. That should be happening at both the front and rear axles. So, so far of all the vehicles we've seen, this should be the most four-wheel drive, but let's see what happens. One thing we really need to mention just at the end of this video, it might be easy to look at what happened here and say, oh, well, traction control is amazing and you don't need limited slip diffs. And you know, why wouldn't we all just have open differentials with traction control? The reason is when you're trying to get going in the snow or you're trying to go up a steep hill, because it's applying brakes to individual wheels to get that diff to give power to the other side, it's really kind of a two steps forward, one step back thing. It's killing your momentum on you a little bit as it's applying those brakes in the winter time. If you're trying to make it up a steep hill or get through some deep snow, you're a lot of times better off shutting that traction control off, even if it means you've only got one wheel drive. You can keep your speed up and keep your momentum up better and you'll get up a hill where with the traction control on, it's applying the brakes to you and that's killing your momentum. Even if it does a decent job of getting power to both wheels, you're losing a few miles an hour every time it does that. And a lot of times you end up, you know, failing to make it up a hill or get through a deep patch of snow or something like that. So. In the real world, a lot of times shutting that traction control off is the only way to go. All right, so all we really looked at here are kind of the basic mechanical open and limited slip differentials. There are a lot of different kinds. You know, you've got your viscous couplings, you've got torsion differentials, you've got the Haldex style gear driven differentials. It, you're already on YouTube. If you're here, go ahead and look. There are some great animations out there that show how these work. Um, even looking at one on the bench, you know, unless you can hook that up to a drive shaft and get it to function, it's hard to visualize what they're really doing. So some of the animations that are out there on YouTube are great and they explain that really well. There are electronic differentials that are very common these days. A pickup truck that's in four wheel drive auto, all that is is two wheel drive until it spins a rear tire and then there's an electronically controlled clutch pack where the center diff would be. So the computer sees the wheel speed sensors are off, it engages your all wheel drive for you automatically and you're in all wheel drive and you don't get in too much trouble. Some of the modern systems, the proactive all wheel drive and all this stuff you hear getting marketed out there, it's the same thing. It's an electronic clutch pack that can be as tight or loose as they want it to be basically. And they're going to run that off of whether or not your windshield wipers are on and whether or not, you know, the temperature sensor tells it to. So it knows, okay, well, if it's below freezing and your wipers are on, it's going to engage more all wheel drive versus if it's 70 degrees out and your wipers are off, it's going to be mostly two wheel drive just for fuel economy, less moving parts, less rolling resistance and longer lasting, you know, bearings and U joints and all of that. 
that stuff and whatever. So that's what's going on with those. We can go down that rabbit hole with some tests and get some modern cars out and take a look at how that works. You know, there's torque vectoring where the computer can control side to side how much uh, power each tire is getting as well. It's really more advanced stuff. The Ford Focus RS we've got, we could get into that if you want to, but hopefully this is just a good foundation for everybody, what differentials are and how they work. Thanks for watching. Team O'Neill Rally School, teamoneal.com. If you're into this stuff, if you got any questions, add them down in the comments. If you got any more ideas for videos, let us know and we'll make them. Uh, give us a visit sometime and we'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.